Hey, my name is Rowan Smith, and I want to welcome you to the Training for Trekking podcast. Now, this is the world's very first podcast, which is entirely dedicated to helping you train, prepare, and conquer your upcoming hike, trek, or mountain adventure. So once a week, I'm going to be giving you quality and practical information on the subjects of physical preparation for trekking, dealing with attitude, and nutrition on the trail, so you can know everything you need to be doing to have the best chance of a safe, enjoyable, and successful adventure. So now you know what you're in for, let's get into today's episode. Hello, hello guys, and welcome to today's episode. We're going to be talking about the art of self-care on the trail, which is a really, really interesting subject, which quite often doesn't really get talked about in the hiking world. Basically, where this comes from is quite often I get messages from aspiring hikers and trekkers, and there's two different um, situations we're going to be talking about today. In the first situation, people reach out to me maybe one or two weeks before they are heading off on an adventure. Maybe they've just heard about me, maybe they're struggling with something, but whatever, they reach out to me just before they're about to shoot off. And as much as I love physical preparation and I love the training side of things and I love doing the long-term approach, if people are reaching out to me a couple of weeks beforehand, there really isn't a huge amount of changes you can make in fitness. So these people were initially looking for help, but I'm like, I need to say to them, hey, training, yes, it's gonna be good, but you're probably not gonna see a huge amount of change for yourself in this situation. However, I can give you a few strategies which you can use while you're actually on the trail, which might not improve your fitness, it might not make you stronger, it might not make you more resilient, but it will make you more comfortable, it'll help your recovery while you're going day to day, and just increase that enjoyment of your adventure a little bit. So that's the first situation of people, which quite often I get messages from like, On the other side of things, there's people who have been training for quite a while and maybe they've strung together a few weeks, a few months of preparation, they're feeling really good, but they tend to message me and they're like, hey Rowan, look, I've got a trek coming up, I've been training really well, I'm feeling really strong, but I'm just concerned about having to walk for days and days and days on end or weeks or months, depending on what type of adventure they're doing. And it is a relatively hard thing to prepare yourself for. You can get yourself in a really good physical uh, physical position, but until you actually go out and do things like these extended adventures, you don't really know how you're gonna pull up. And these people are coming to me and saying, hey, look, I just don't know what I should be doing to help me get through. I'm worried I'm gonna be waking up stiff and sore. I'm worried I'm gonna struggle with multiple days on end. And so again, this stuff can be really, really beneficial for that situation as well, just to help your body recover in between days of hiking, whether you're doing a multi-day trek, a multi-week hike, or even if you're just doing a day hike in your national park and you wanna recover after, this stuff can be really, really beneficial. And on top of that, it can be really great for just relieving those aches and pains, which are so, so common on the trail. And if you've ever been there and like waking up in the morning on day three of a hike and you're hobbling around like an old man until you warm up, and it really isn't that much fun. So. Today, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna be sharing with you a few really, really simple and practical strategies which you can apply to your time on the trail, which is gonna help you with these things. Now, the very, very first strategy here is self-massage. Now, self-massage is a whole, covers a whole bunch of different things and it's a very, very broad term. But in general, it's just basically using some type of tool or even your hands just to massage out tight or sore areas of the body. So I'm sure we've all had a massage in some type in our life and you know how good that feels. And this is literally just doing that to yourself. Now the benefits of this is number one, it can aid muscle recovery between days of hiking. It can also really be beneficial in your training as well. Um, it can loosen up tight muscles. So if you are waking up in the morning, it can just loosen things off. Though to be, uh, to be very, very clear, this is only in the short term, so it won't give you long-term gains in flexibility, but that's a whole different story. We're not gonna dive into that today. And it can just simply relieve discomfort in sore muscles. So again, if you're waking up super, super sore one day, doing a little bit of this self-massage can relieve you a little bit. Now, what you wanna do here is you wanna grab some type of um, hard tool to massage yourself with. So. In day-to-day life, you know, when you're at home, foam roller, everyone's more or less everyone's seen these things. Really, really beneficial when you're just in a gym or at home. Absolutely lovely to do this type of stuff with. Obviously, you're not gonna be lugging around a foam roller, so there are a few good options for the trail, including your water bottle can be a great substitute here, your trekking pole or your trekking pole handle if you're trying to get into little spots. Um, I used to carry around a little massage bowl, which was relatively heavy for years and years and years when I was doing my backpacking overseas. 
These days, there's a whole bunch of these cork massage balls popping up here and there, which will weigh, weigh you down a whole 10 grams, but they're absolutely perfect to put in your pack, so I highly recommend them. Or even um, using like a smooth river stone, as was recommended by Lee a few weeks ago, or even just getting your thumbs or your fingers into it. Anything that you can really manipulate into the tight areas of your muscles, which is going to provide a little bit of relief. Now, you can get really, really complicated with this stuff, but in general, it's super simple. You basically can just use whatever tool you're using to apply pressure to whatever muscles you're trying to work with, and then slowly and generally roll over them. So you want to be rolling over things like the bottoms of your feet, and that will feel absolutely amazing at the end of the day, or your shins, or your thighs, or your glutes, which is your bum. You basically move over it nice and slow. You try to seek out these like tight spots or these hot spots in these muscles, and you just spend a little bit of time rolling around in it. You want to take a few deep breaths in and out whenever you find a tight spot, and every time you exhale, you want to feel it release a little bit. And after you've done maybe three or four breaths on a spot, then you just move on to the next one. And literally spending maybe 10 to 15 minutes of um, this at the end of each day of hiking can really, really do absolute wonders for, as I said, your muscle recovery, relieving sore muscles, and then long term, it does help for preventing those overuse injuries creeping up. Also, if you are waking up in the morning, it can be a really, really good warm up. Now, one mistake I often see when people are doing this is they've got that mentality of no pain, no gain, in the sense that they just absolutely hammer themselves with this self-massage and it's an excruciating pain and they just think that's gonna be really, really good. But it's a little bit counter counterproductive there because anytime the body gets stressed out and anytime the body experiences pain, it wants to protect itself. And so it just sort of tightens up even more, it gets ready to deal with a threat and it doesn't really wanna have any type of relaxation or any type of change. And that's the same thing when you're massaging. If you're going too hard and you're literally clenching your muscles and feeling gross about it, your body isn't gonna release and loosen up, it's just gonna stay tight. So I always recommend take it nice and gentle with this stuff. At a scale of one to 10 in intensity rating, zero feeling absolutely nothing, 10 feeling excruciating pain, you probably really only wanna be working about a six or a seven, at a point where you can really comfortably breathe in and out. But if you stick to that, spend a little bit of time on each muscle working it out each day, it really, really will go um, uh, go a long way for your, uh, for your time on the trail. And then one final point on there is, you know, don't be, be, use your common sense here. You don't want to be doing anything that's too mental. If anything does feel dodgy, it's probably going to be dodgy for your body and literally just skip it. If something feels uncomfortable, like it'll be mildly uncomfortable, but something feels painful or you're not 100% certain of it, literally just skip it. Play around, see what works for you, but it can be really, really beneficial. So that's point number one, and that's a really, really important one to make. Self-massage um, on the trail, either in the morning or the evening, and it should keep you happy days. Number two, we're gonna be talking about dehydration. Now dehydration is an issue for a whole bunch of different reasons. Dehydration can significantly impair your physical capabilities, feeling, making everything feel so much harder when you're on the trail. I think there's even 2% of your total body weight lost in dehydration can have some really, really significant effects. Um, and it can impair your mental performance and your decision-making skills, which is pretty important if you're out on the trail. And in regards to self-care on the trail, dehydration, can cause excessive muscle soreness and impair muscle recovery. So you do want to stay on top of it. Now, as we talked about a few weeks um, with Holly when we were on the Nutrition um, Podcast, dehydration, an easy way to judge your levels of dehydration is if you're in your training is to weigh yourself before and after a training session. And then whatever the difference is, um, the amount of weight you've lost in that training session, you want to be drinking 150% of that in the next hour or so. And that's going to ensure that your body's fully hydrated, reaches that hydration stage, and you're all good to go. Obviously, when you're on the trail, it's not so far feasible for you to do this. So two recommendations I usually say. Number one, if you can do this um, measurements in your training, so you can get a good judge of how much water you tend to lose after, you know, three, four, five, five hours hiking, or whatever, that's amazing. If not, the best way is just to judge your urine color. So having a look at making sure your urine stays either clear or straw colored throughout. If it is getting a little bit darker, you do want to keep drinking up because it really, really is important to stay hydrated just so you're recovering properly day to day. On top of that, you know, there's a few bits and pieces you can do to aid your hydration. So as we talked again about the other week, sodium or salt does help fluid retention. So having, having some salty snacks or electrolyte supplement day to day can be really beneficial for your hydration while you're on the trail. 
just making sure you're constantly drinking. A little thing I often get my clients to do is literally just write a W at the start of the day on their hand. And even if they're wearing gloves and they can't see it, just that physical reminder of being on their hand can often kick the body, um, kick the mind into thinking, hey, I need to drink and just make sure you stay on top of it. But anyway, hydration, very, very important. Make sure you stay on top of it and it will go a long way to helping you day to day, stay comfortable and make sure you're happy days on the trail. The next one we wanna talk about is compression garments. So compression garments are really, really interesting thing, usually in the forms of socks or tights for hikers. And they basically put a whole bunch of compression onto your legs and they can be really, really beneficial for muscle recovery. Now there's a whole bunch of argument in the sporting world about how these work and what they do and all that. But really, you know, they there is questions whether or not they do help performance during exercise, but there can be very, very little argument. They are beneficial for muscle recovery after exercise. So quite often you'll go on the internet and you'll say, hey, a compression garment is good for you. There'll be a whole bunch of confusion and there'll be a whole bunch of different statements. You can really, really cut through a lot of that and just say, hey, may or may not be good while you're actually exercising. But if you're wearing it afterwards, it's really, really good for muscle recovery. Now, they're really, really light. They're not gonna weigh down your pack. They're really beneficial. The main aim of the game, what they do, is they just help improve blood flow when you're not exercising. So what that does is it allows your body to just flush out the waste products and which it accumulates while you're exercising, helps reduce aches and pains, and just minimizes muscle soreness. The best way to do this is you can do in two options. You can either wear them for a couple of hours, basically right immediate after exercise, um, so that's at the end of your day when you're cooking dinner and that, just popping on your compression stuff and doing that. Or alternatively, you can just wear it overnight while you're sleeping. Um, some people do get a little bit uncomfortable with these things while they're sleeping. So it's best to test it out before you go. But such a simple thing, but it can really, really make a big difference in your um, comfort while you're on the trail. And I highly recommend that to basically any hiker who's doing a multi-day trek. Next one I want to talk about is sleep. Now sleep... You know, we all know sleep's important, but often it does get overlooked. And it's so, so, so important for your physical performance, your mental performance, your immune system, your energy levels, your mood, and just a whole bunch of other things. But when you're on the trail, obviously, sometimes getting quality sleep can be easier said than done. There's a whole bunch of different factors that really can get in the way of a good night's sleep, whether it's bad weather when you're sleeping in a tent, you know, an uncomfortable sleep, um, sleep system, so you've got a rubbish mattress or something like that. There might be noisy campsite companions if you're out camping. They're foraging animals. And like even your aching muscles and sore muscles from hiking all day can really, really disrupt your sleep. And then if you're up at attitude, there's a whole different story and that adds to it as well. And while you're never really going to be able to control these factors that are going to be affecting you, you should be trying to do everything else you can within your power that can minimize their effects on your sleep and just so you make sure you're getting that deep and restful sleep that you need because it is so, so important day to day. So there's a few there's a whole bunch of different things you can do for your sleep. A few recommendations I usually make um, for my hikers and my trekkers are things like drinking chamomile tea at the end of the day, fantastic for sleep, won't weigh your pack down at all, but really, really beneficial. Using a little bit of lavender oil. So I like, you know, before I go to bed, I use a drop of lavender oil on my chest at home. Again, if you're on the trail, this isn't going to weigh you down, but it can be really, really good. A little bit of light stretching just before you go to bed or that self-massage stuff, really, really beneficial. Spending a little bit of time just doing some conscious deep breathing techniques. So literally just doing big breaths in, big breaths out for five minutes can all just clock you out. And then things like magnesium supplements are really, really beneficial as well. But whatever you need to do to help that sleep, I highly recommend you have a think about it because it can go a really long way. And with this type of stuff, it's always best if you do practice it at home with the sort of sleep routine and the sleep aids. They do get a little bit more effective over time, purely for the fact that the body starts to recognize, hey, when I have a chamomile tea, not only is it doing good things in my body, which is inducing sleep, but it simply just recognizes, ah, oh, chamomile tea equals time to sleep. So if you can string together a few weeks of doing it before you go and get yourself in the routine of it, can go a very long way. But that's about it for today, guys. Some really, really simple recommendations there. And you may have heard these before, but they do bear repeating because they can be so beneficial for when you're on the trail. And as we always say, these types of adventures, when you're out there, you're probably not going to be doing them many times in your life, whether you're going over to Everest Base Camp, climbing Kilimanjaro, or simply doing a multi-day hike in a national park somewhere in your local country. 
most people don't tend to repeat these things over and over. So you really do want to be in a position where you can best enjoy them as much as you can. And this type of stuff that we talked about, you can apply it straight away. You don't need any any thought. You don't really need any training and it can make a real significant difference. So I really hope you enjoyed this guys um, today, guys. I hope you get a little bit out of it. As always, any questions, please do send me an email at rowan at summitstrength.com.au. If you enjoyed this, please, I would love it if you can leave me a review on iTunes. Um, it really does go a long way to help me build this podcast and reach a lot more hikers and trekkers. But I hope you enjoyed this today, guys, and we'll talk to you very, very soon.